Many thanks for joining us this morning on Off the Press, the program where we look at the headlines of the national dailies and try to make sense of it. And with me this morning to do so is Dr. Idowu Adigoke. Good morning. Welcome. And Tuboson Akeju. Good morning. Thank Welcome, you. guys. It's good to have you this morning. Oh, by the way, he, he, you are a public affairs analyst and he's a reputation manager. I didn't forget to say that. <laughs> Okay, so we have a couple of papers this morning uh, to look at, uh, but we shall begin with the Vanguard. And the first thing at the top of the Vanguard, it will be displayed shortly on your screen, is uh, May Lafia saying, our country will never live up to its promise of greatness unless we hand uh, over the touch to a new generation who possess the coverage of their convictions. Okay, and then uh, that's on page 31. 19 journalists harassed illegally uh, and harassed, illegally arrested, detained this year. That's according to Amnesty, and that's a lot, 19 journalists. You find that story on page 9. And your letter to SGF, that's on minimum wage, your letter to FGSGF, Declaration of Trade Dispute in Gege, tells Labour. That story is on page 41. And the big story there is what Benin and Niger must do to get borders reopened, according to the federal government. And we have a picture story there of uh, the vice president and uh, Tony uh, getting a certificate there. Now, Atiku vs. Buhari, uh, Supreme Court blasts CUPP, says we don't pander to dictates of anybody. And that's on page 9. Nobody attacked Oshomole, says Edo CP. Again, that's on page 17, page 12 rather. And then crisis, Obama show not sole owners of Lautech. That's according to workers there, and it's on page 40. Now, government has abandoned us to our fate. Parents of abducted Kaduna school girls lament. That story, again, is on page 13 of the Vanguard newspaper. 600 days in captivity. Leah's father laments federal government's inability to secure daughter's release. And that's on page 10 of um, the Vanguard newspaper. And then if we go to the back, oh well, the back is the sports news, so we'll come to that. Um, where do we begin? Who wants to start first? Dr. Ido. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You well, said the, something about Milafia? Yeah? Yes. Well, I, I just I read the article and what he's actually saying, mm -hmm. what he said is that we have a lot of young Nigerians doing well and they have the capacity and the capability to take the country to the next stage. And if we don't give them the enabling environment and hand over to them, we will still be just rigmaroling mm. in where we are. So that's just the summary of what he's saying. Mm. And that's the obvious truth. It's very obvious that these, uh, the cabal that has ruled this country for so long, from when they were young mm. till their old age, have fail the entire nation, and they don't want to leave. That's the challenge. Mm. And if they don't want to leave, we need to begin to ask questions and demand, because I've always said it, no one will hand you power. You have to demand it or take it. Mm. Take it. Mm. What do you think? <laughs> to <bustle. laughs> They're not going to pass it down to the young ones, even if they have the capacity you know, to do better than them. Um, so the, the, the younger generation must, you know, position themselves well to take mm, over power exactly. from those who have, you know, inappropriately, you know, governed um, this country. Mm. Okay. So um, we have the story on the what's been in uh, and Niger must do to get uh, borders reopened. Uh, which other story anyways? To so the, the story about the border closure, um, it, um, it's a, it's a double-edged sword. Yeah, it makes sense. You know, yeah, it's a, yeah. a double-edged sword. While um, it's a good development, and this morning when I was reading that news item, I remembered that at the point in the history of China, who has mm. become the poster child for, you know, everything great and um, being produced around the world, had to close, you know, their borders mm. at some point. However, it doesn't stop at just closing the borders because you have to ensure that the closure of the border also there's enough stimulation within the country mm -hmm. to be able to fulfill demand. Because if you can't fulfill demand, what's just going to happen is that you're just going to have a lot of 
um, increase in prices, which is another type of inflation, and then yeah. things are going to become a lot more difficult. Um, I get what the federal government has accused the neighboring countries of doing, but I think that the fault is not only on the neighboring countries, mm -hmm. you know, the fault is also on our side. And I'm afraid that there's a bit of misrepresentation in some of the headlines. Um, while I, I would first say that some of the statements um, credited to the government officials that spoke yesterday were quite insensitive to mm -hmm. say that there's no hunger in the land yeah. here in a country where there's high poverty rates, mm -hmm. uh, where people are said to be spending 120 percent of their income on food alone that means at some point they're not eating to say that nigerians are not well, they have to cut down yes i think that that's very insensitive but i haven't said that i think that we also need to look at some of the benefit that the closure of border you know has allowed us to gain um i happen to have a brother who is into agriculture and you'll be surprised that people that have farms that you know months a few months ago were very very frustrated i mean poultry for example mm. today cannot fulfill the demand that they have and that makes it very interesting mm. but are we do we now have enough policies in place while this is happening to mm. ensure that the person who has ten thousand birds today and can fulfill demand is empowered enough to have so twenty thousand birds so that they can fulfill that demand because if that doesn't happen the prices of poultry products in the market will continue to rise and then at some point when you find reach a truce with the uh, with the neighboring country and you open the borders then this product will come in again then we'll go back to mm, where we no were more. what they are saying is that the product uh, and talking about misrepresentation they're not completely you know closing the, the borders border. they're just saying if we cannot scan the product if we don't have equipment at certain places to scan the products that are coming then we are not we going to open to those but place. I think that they should double up and mm. ensure that we are because the other effect, the negative effect of this is that there are certain products that we are also exporting through those products, which, have, which we now have a glut in the market. So, mm -hmm. for example, I hear about two or three weeks ago, there was a glut of eggs. Apparently, we export quite a bit of our poultry eggs, you know. So, we have to look at this from an holistic point of mm -hmm. view and say that this, we must, you know, create the enabling. Another example is tomatoes. They import a lot of tomatoes. Sure. Tomatoes in Nigeria is said to have high water content mm -hmm. and they are not good for certain things. Mm -hmm. So, do we need to have, you know, the research agencies or do we need to buy the seeds of tomatoes that have less water content so that we do not have to import mm. you know so i think we should look at this from a strategic and long-term point of view and implement it properly rather than just use this you know forceful way of doing things mm. that will only you know deliver um short-term benefits mm. apparently there are two sides to it yeah, yeah most definitely mm. yeah. Let, let me quickly add to that okay sure um the closure of border as well because i i listened on the news today was is actually being used not even just for economic reasons for security reasons mm -hmm. to check the proliferation of Perhaps. kidnappers or people bandits, come, bandits yeah. Yeah. coming into the country but like you said the mispresentation from government officials you cannot say nigerians are not hungry when we have 70 percent mm. unemployment rate what have they feed, been feeding on yeah I agree. Okay, so 600 days in captivity. Each time I, I hear the story about Leah, I fear. I remember at some point, um, one, of the, one of the meetings with the Bring Back Our Girls group, and uh, Femi Falono was there. And during the interview, we asked him one question and said, is this girl really alive? You know, is Leah still alive? And he said, oh, yes, he knows. He, certainly, there are indications that he's alive. But what's stopping the government from securing the release. So, you know, it brings me to the father's lament this morning, you know. Um, sec security situation in our country is at an all-time low. And you kidnap, when you have, um, you know, issues like kidnapping, it's very, very delicate because, mm -hmm. um, you know, the general are saying that you can't cut off the, uh, you can't cut off the nose to spite the eyes of the something, eye. yeah. you know. know what so doing. in an attempt to rescue, you also don't want a situation where you lose the life. Yeah, yeah. I feel that our security forces have not been well trained hmm. to handle situations like this. And, sensitive. Uh, and let me digress very, you know, very swiftly to the issue of budget, which I believe will still come back to trade, mm -hmm. where there's a where the, the minister of finance said, um, you know, um, the budget to defense you know, has the highest share in the 2020 budget. The question I'm asking is, 
that money is it going to into developing for future need or for the immediate need? Are we focusing on the fact that we have terrorism to deal with? Because today we are dealing with the Boko Haram. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow we'll have something else to deal with. You know, the world generally is even increasing, is, is advancing, you know, in bioterrorism, in cyber attacks and oh, yeah. all, all the likes. So the, 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 this, this, this very humongous amount of money that is being spent on defense, is it spent in doing that? So coming back to the issue of Lear, yeah. uh, security apparatus have not been well trained to handle situations like this and so to be very sincere they might find it a lot more difficult to handle are they asking for help mm. i'm not sure they're asking for enough are they you know handling the emotional part of this thing properly i'm not entirely sure they're also you know doing that because i mean it's been a long time that's yeah, 600 days, days. Yeah, mm -hmm. 600 days in captivity we yeah. only hope that um, there'll be an end to that all right, um, any other thing here? There's something on Supreme Court, Blast UPP says we don't pander to the dictates of anybody. We um, need to see that. On page nine, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, nobody attacks Oshomole, says Ido CP, and Obomasho, not so owners of Lautech workers and the rest of it. I would say we'll grab a copy of um, Vanguard newspaper because we have to move on in the interest of time. We'll go to the punch. We've been told to take a look at the punch. And it says custom ban export imports via land borders indefinitely. That's on page 29 of the punch newspaper, which is up for review now. It will be up in your screen shortly. A minimum wage FG labor in make or break meeting today. That's on page 11. Federal government uh, spent 3.3 trillion naira in six months, says minister. And that's on page 30, yeah, already displayed there. You can see it on your screen. Um, panel on articles appeal not yet constituted, according to the Supreme Court, on page 18. Now, fresh crisis in Buhari's home. Aisha battles Daura's family. And that's on page 2. Mom and Daura's daughter explains viral video fight and how president's wife almost injured us, according to Fatima. Uh, she was laughing at me, says Aisha Buhari. Presidency investigating presidential villa video. Uh, this whole story, it's on page two. Interesting uh, things coming up there. And then police uncover center with 300 inmates in Katsina. That story is on page 12. Um, Oshun ex speaker denies knowledge of Tinubu's Tinibu, uh, 2023 banner on page 22 of the Punch newspaper. You'll find that story there. And EFCC knocked over arrest of 94. Oshun Night Clubbers. That's on page 9 of the Punch newspaper. And then uh, Oshomala's aide and CP clash over ex-governor's home attack on page 18 of the Punch newspaper. And if we quickly go to the back of it, it says, um, is a column there, Abi Ahmed's Nobel Peace Prize accolade. And that's by Tayo. Okay. Um, please find out again. We'll come to that, or rather you find out what it is about. So let's come back to the front page of the Punch newspaper and say, so where do you want to begin, Dr. Edo? Well, the fresh center spread, the fresh crisis in there. Buhari's home. home. What do we need to know, really? It's very, very sad. And it is, for me, it is recklessness in governance. Hmm. Because for the, uh, there's no protection for the first lady. Because if you read it, she said there were security about 200 Agents of them, we have, to her. And Fatima was making the video and none could stop her. So it just shows she's on her own. And then it brings us back to the rumor or the news that was making the round last week mm -hmm. about the president taking a new wife. Mm -hmm. So if there's no smoke, if there's no fire, there's no smoke. Well, the presidency has come out to say, well... Yeah, but now this is coming out. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing there, there's been something that has led... It could be a linkage? Yeah. I, I, I feel there's a linkage because that means there was a rancor in the family and that's why that's coming out. And now we're seeing videos of the first lady yelling and all that. And then Mam and Dara are saying to uh, Tubosun before we came on, mm. is he a government official? Why were you giving me the glass, uh, the glass house they say they call it in the uh, Aso Villa, a whole house? He's not, he's not politically elected. He's not a government official living on uh, our taxes. Uh, so what are your thoughts? I think it's very, very messy yeah, and embarrassing. It's messy that and embarrassing. The issue of the first family is now being the public space on the pages of newspapers, um, and it goes to 
um, show that there's a lot, there's a big problem. And this is my own, for my little knowledge of psychology, what I think is happening and is the, that... And your knowledge as a reputation manager. <laughs> <laughs> I think Aisha, Aisha, is, Aisha is actually screaming for help because I feel like, I mean, I'm not married, but if your wife is disrespected, you will take action that will give us a list that you have our best interest at mm. heart. That this issue has made it to the newspaper or to the media to the is media a sign that, you know, she's, oh, she's, no she's not getting the kind of, um, you know, response or attention that she thinks she deserves. Um, and the fact that a relative, respect. yes, the fact that a relative will make a video, oh, do you know, claiming that, oh, it's because she wants to use it as an evidence. I mean, these are areas that sometimes when you're going in, they won't even allow you taking your phone. Yeah. No, How you come can't. someone is actually recording yeah. that kind of, and then had the audacity, you to know, to put it in, um, to put in it space. out. Uh, because what it also shows is that there's in a, there's, there's no fear that there's going to be any consequence of doing that, you know. So it's rather sad. I really, really hope that it can really, it can be nipped in the bud because, like I said, these things really, really embarrass our country. Like, they do. I, I, in the, I mean, right now we probably won't see the impact, but I, one of these days when we're having some of those Nigeria Ghana or Nigeria Kenya fight, I would not be very surprised that they are going to Someone really, really yap us, you know, with these mm. things. Yeah, you know, it's it's rather sad. It has it has an effect on, on, on the nation, so yeah. to speak. Yeah. yeah. So what you see, this uh, police uncover center for three hundred inmates in Katsina. Did anybody say that? I saw the news. How gruesome and how. And I, I'm, I mean, I'm I'm very happy that you know. The, the, this was the uncovered mm -hmm. and because this is where some sort of extremism you know and but. you know this where they grow this is you know this is this because uh, and it's so it's inhuman and again I sincerely hope that we will see this to a logical conclusion yeah, yeah. Uh, because I see that everybody a lot of the security forces have become more the, the media appetite has greatly increased yeah. and sometimes we are not on we are unable to properly follow through how some of these things are you know oh uh, this uh, people are well prosecuted mm -hmm. and i hope that they will be well prosecuted so that it will serve as a deterrent to avoid you know things like that another story uh so to just speed up things mm -hmm. that caught my attention is the issue with lab the label the nigerian yeah. label okay yeah. yeah today they have a meeting today i am personally very paid about what we what has become the nature of the average nigerian most, more specifically the nlc yeah. mm. that what they are trying to get from government you know, is an increase in salary. Mm -hmm. And at no point in this conversation has there been something, a negotiation that says government has to cut down their own spending yes. or the legislation Up has to now. cut their own spending. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually very disappointed that it has not come to the fore because what they are asking for is government is the same uh, for level 7 to 14, 7%. They are requesting for 29% increase for six, uh, for 15 to 16, 17, uh, 15 to, uh, 17. They're requesting for 24. Government is saying they want to do maybe 5.6 mm -hmm. or something. And um, it's a negotiation. But why is it that? any point in this We're conversation nobody is asking that the national assembly should cut down if they want us to take that but nobody is leveraging on that because mm -hmm. we are spending a whole lot nobody is asking that oh we need palliative because like i once said on this program there is a constant race to get a better life in nigeria mm. why because the basic minimum is not guaranteed mm, yeah. so why is the nlc not fighting for the basic minimum Which is not well Corruption. Yes, which is what's foiling corruption. Why, is, why, why, why don't we have a situation where there's a constant fight to request that we are going to agree a milestone and we're not coming back to negotiate if this milestone, no we want XYZ number of healthcare centers at this particular yeah. standard. We want to be able to check if the standard of this healthcare at you know, at the best at every time. Because at the end of the day, those are the things that you end up spending money. We Fun. want a 21st century mass transit transport system. No. Nobody is talking about that. We're asking about an yeah. increase that will further spend on what? 
And that won't even be enough still. It would never yeah. be enough. Be enough you know? So mm. I'm, I'm actually very, very, very disappointed because I know that most likely they're going to reach. And the government, for the very first time, have enough leverage to implement something like this because the party, the ruling party, mm -hmm. has almost absolute control of the National no. Assembly. Assembly. That's correct. You know, I'm so I'm surprised that they're in a better position, yeah, they're they're in a better to, position to say, okay, this is the time that we're going to cut this down. You know, I, it, 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 it's 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 sad reasons. and you know um, very well, discomforting. We say we're it's discomforting. I agree. <laughs> we say we're the meeting today. Let's them to. Uh, I can tell you. Mm. Sorry, I can tell you that meeting, they will reach an agreement yeah, and nothing happens. Yeah. Because it's only when it comes to wages and salary that we suddenly find out we have labor. Mm. Like you were saying, labors don't even fight for the welfare of the workers. Yeah. It's unfortunate. There's such a contrast there, if you come to think of it. Anyways, we'll see what happens. Uh, we, won't, we won't go with your conclusion. We will <laughs> <Hold on. laughs> we'll we'll wait for, we'll yes, for the final outcome. OK, so we we'll quickly go to the nation newspaper. In the interest of time, we're we'll just going to uh, read through. Igbo leaders head for villa over neglect and that president must act, according to them. That's on page 8 of the Nation newspaper. We're looking at the Nation newspaper very quickly. Fake Islamic center found in Daura. 300 students rescued. That's on page 8. Evaristo Atwood win Booker Prize, uh, 50,000 pounds to be shared. Congratulations there. Mm -hmm. And that's on page 2. And the big story here, it's Dixon urges Bielsons to reject tickets of criminals. 500 PDP members defect to APC in Lokoja. That's a big number, 500. Leon receives roadmap documents. This and more you find on page 10 of the nation newspaper. It is displayed there on your screen. And then we have 95, 94 rather suspected internet fraudsters held in Oshobo as EFCC raids joined. I think it was a nightclub. And that story is on page four. Some of the suspects uh, seen there sitting on their cars. And that's from yesterday. Uh, 94 of them. How come you have such huge number of people gathered in a place? Well, a that story is on page <laughs> five. <a> well, <laughs> okay. Why borders won't reopen for now by federal government? Illegal arms, dangerous drugs no longer come in. Okay. And then arrested people and seized items at the border. You find details of it. It's on, pa on the front page with the details there. Uh, you, uh, but it's continued also on page seven of the Nation newspaper. And siege to AP APC chairs home never happened, says. Edo State Government, and that's uh, on the front page, but it's continued again on page 8. Anxiety as new uh, wage talks hold today. I wonder who's anxious, whether I'm Gige or the Labour <laughs> Party. That story is on the front page, but it's continued on uh, page 7 of the Nation newspaper. Court orders interim freezing of 45 bank accounts for rice smuggling. And that's on page 41 of the Nation newspaper. We'll turn back to the back page of the Nation newspaper. Rumors of a third term and a wedding. And you have a picture of Aisha, Buhari, and Sadia there. I have no thoughts, no comments, and no insights whatsoever regarding these developments, nor what they portend for a third term or the other room. Okay. Grab a copy of the Nation newspaper and find out what Olatunji uh, Dari is talking about here. He says it's called At Home Abroad, rumors of a third term and a wedding. Uh, we know that it's already about the first house, uh, first family rather, and that's uh, talking about. So do want to quickly to look at the fraudsters' uh, internet um, case in Oshobo? Well, I just, I think they're still held as suspects. Mm. They've not been charged for anything. They raided the club and then got 94 But people. isn't it worrying, this whole thing of the fraudsters, you know, yeah, they, uh, no, no, being they, a common phenomenon that we'll have to talk yeah, about? Yes. Fraud stars have always been with us. I, have, I said it here before. It's just growing upgraded? Up, growing up, they were called 419. Yeah. Now, they are now fraud stars. Yeah. So they are now they, Yahoo, Yahoo. Yeah, but the, the problem we have now is the expanse is more than what it used to be. And they now flaunt it. Mm. The, and, and it is because of what has become of our society. Like he's, he mentioned earlier, all of us wants to get rich quick. Mm. Most people don't even want to labor. They don't want to work, but they want mm -hmm. quick money. And then the ones who want to work don't even have avenue to work. There's no jo joblessness. Mm. So well, over, time, yeah, over time, your p perseverance or patience go way out. And you join the bandwagon. So I'm sure. Even though it's not a justification. Yeah, it's not. Justification. I'm just telling you what is going on. Never it's be. not. It's not. There's, not, there's no 
uh, again saying what is wrong is wrong. Absolutely. And because everybody is doing a wrong thing, doesn't mean you should right. do it. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I think the first, and I want to owe the media, um, you know, to, 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 to practice a higher standard. Let's be absolutely sure that the 94 people arrested are actually internet fraudsters. Mm. Let's be absolutely sure. Because sometimes what happens is you go, so you went to a nightclub. Definitely there will be all the, kinds, of, everybody all kinds there. of people there. So if you've, you know, taken all of them, are you, have, do you have proof to show that the 94 of them are internet fraudsters? Mm. You know, and I think that the police need to, you know, go through proper processes yeah. of, you know, and that's one of the reasons why you never see some of these things into a logical the conclusion. conclusion yeah. Because we're never sure, yeah. sadly. Yeah. So we're going to take this day uh, newspaper in the interest of time again and to quickly wrap up. Investors' confidence in insurance stock resurges on recap recapitalization sentiments. Uh, that sector rises from 107.48 billion naira in five months to 112 billion naira. That's on the front page. You can see it there, but it's continued on page five of this day newspaper. And then oil benchmark lowered over expected crude, crude glut, says Finance Minister. Defense Education Police lead in sectoral proposals. Crude price lumps below $60 over U.S.-China trade deal. And then uh, that story is on the front page, but it's continued there on page six as displayed on your screen. And labor braces for strike as talks with federal government collapse. Well, we'll wait and see what happens after today. And then parties to hold decisive talks today. That story is on the front page, you can see it there. And then it's continued on page five of the nation's, uh, this day rather, newspaper. And behind it is Buhari's fake social media wedding. Um, you need to grab a, grab a copy of, of, of this day to find out what this is about Abati. with Ruben Abati there saying, um, find out what it's about. It's so a whole page almost. And then Bola Shagaya and Taiwo La Kanu at 60. Please grab a copy of this. We would run to Complete Sports. I'm sorry, gentlemen. We just have to read through this in the interest of time. Please grab a copy of Complete Sports. Ronaldo scores 700 career goals. 700 like he's called, played to 700? Yeah. Yes, called 700. 700 goals over yeah. time. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and more. Please grab a copy of uh, the Complete Sports. You can see it displayed there. Ozoho out for six months. Uh, Chelsea... Uh, Rangers star, congratulate whoever. So, Joe Arebo, please grab a copy of all of this newspaper, and this is where we will call it a wrap. I want to say thank you, Dr. Ido, and thank of course, thank much. you to Bosun Akeju for, uh, for being with me this morning to make sense of this newspaper uh, headlines. And that's where we'll call it a wrap. We'll do this again tomorrow, same time, 8 30, here on Plus TV Africa on this program of the press, where we'll tell you all that's happening on the headlines of our dailies. And I am Amaka Okui. Have yourself a great day.